Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's your Kiwi Connection here, Kim07 and today I'm bringing you the reference R9290 against the Windforce edition R9290 from Gigabyte. So this is going to be pretty quick and I'm going to try shoot through this very quickly because honestly this review is very similar to the Triax versus the reference 290 in that everything I have to say I've pretty much already said and uh, I probably won't be doing this again in the future comparing non-reference cards I review to the reference 290 because it's not much point to be honest. So uh, first off the differences between the two cards uh, mainly there's only two. Obviously the cooler is uh, different on the Windforce card. It's got the Windforce cooler which is a uh, very good design they've been using for quite a while compared to the reference blower design on the reference card. And uh, and thus the size is a bit different so the Gigabyte card is slightly longer, slightly thicker, uh, slightly taller as well but not by a huge amount. And uh, the core GPU speed is different. So Gigabyte decided for I don't know what reason to leave the memory speeds alone. So that's at 5000, just the same as the reference card even though all the other manufacturers bumped theirs up. Uh, Gigabyte for some reason didn't. Um, and they bumped up though the core clock to 1040 megahertz from the reference card runs at 947 so about 100 megahertz faster. Now let's shoot through the performance pretty quickly. So first up we got Fermark. So the reference 290 did an average of 29 frames per second and the Windforce an average of 37 frames per second. Now this is uh, 4 times MSAA, 15 minutes uh, user settings so um, my own setup for it. Uh, Unigen Valley Extreme HD preset, reference to 90, 53.3, the Windforce 60.7, so decent gap that time. Unigen Heaven 4.0, this is DirectX 11, everything maxed out, reference card 48.5, Windforce 53.7. Now, open uh, Heaven 4.0 again, this time on OpenGL, once again everything maxed out. Uh, reference 290, 35.2, Windforce 38.3, so not as much of a gap that time around. Now on to Tomb Raider, uh, using maxed out settings without VSync on. Reference 290, 72.3, Windforce 79.9. And last up, Bioshock Infinite, everything maxed out. Reference 290, 108 frames per second average, Windforce 115.8 so there's been a few differences between them between sort of about say 3 and 8 frames per second on some of them uh, I attribute pretty much all of that to the uh, increased core clock on the Windforce card maybe a tiny bit of throttling also on the reference to 90 but I doubt that played much of a part um, so that leads on to cooling. So you're not going to be surprised here. So on Fermark, the max temperature I saw on the reference 290 was 94 degrees, while the maximum temperature I saw on the Windforce was 84 degrees. Um, the reference card went up to 50% fan speed, that's just the max that was set in Catalyst, and the Windforce went to 70%. So but I mean, even saying that, 70% uh, fan speed on the Windforce is still quieter than 50% on the reference. Also, I took the temperatures on the Heaven 4.0 DirectX 11 with everything maxed out. Once again, the reference went up to 94 degrees, um, and the Windforce only went to 78. So, you know, plain and simple, the Windforce cooler is obviously superior to the reference uh, 290 cooler. Now, noise. So here's what the Windforce 290 sounds like at idle. And this is what the reference 290 sounds like at idle.
Now, this is them when I was running in Unigen Valley in Extreme HD, so let's go with the Wind Force first. And now the reference to 90. So quite a bit of difference in noise, I can attest to that. The uh, wind force is much quieter than the reference 290. So overall, wrapping it up real quick. Um, pretty much exactly the same as what I said with the Triax. So <laughs> the Gigabyte card is less noisy, the wind force, less noisy, cooler and faster. Um, and slightly bigger, which, you know, I guess is a con, but... For most mid towers, it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much exactly what I said with the Triax. If you want to overclock, get the Wind Force. If you want a quiet card, get the Wind Force. If you want a slightly faster card and you're not going to overclock, then get the Wind Force. And um, there's pretty much no reason now to get the 290 aside from if you just want a cheap. If you pick one up second hand or something, because a lot of people are selling them cheap now. But honestly, they're going to run hot. You're going to have to run really aggressive fan curves if you're going to overclock it. And um, with the price of these non-reference ones coming down now, honestly, don't buy a reference 290 brand new. Just buy a non-reference one. Spend the extra, however much it might be, you know, $50. Or wait till they're on special on uh, New Egg or NCIX if you're in Canada, uh, if you're in North America. Um, because you can sometimes pick up the non-reference ones for cheaper than the reference ones. So that's what I'd say to do. Uh, so that's going to round this out. I'm actually going to start a playthrough series. I've never done that before, so I want to give it a try. And I'm going to start with Bioshock Inf... Uh, not Bi... Just Bioshock, actually. Yeah, I've already clocked Bioshock Infinite. So I never played it. Quite a classic game. So I'm going to play through that. Um, I'm really bad at horror games, so I get really scared really easily. So it'll probably be a bit of fun, but I'll try my best. So that'll be coming out in the next few days. I've also got the Asus DC2 card on the way, and I'll be doing a review of that, hopefully at the end of this week or early next week. I thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.